Good morning, Vineyard Church. My name's Mark, and I'm one of the ministry leaders here at the Vineyard. If this is your first time joining us online, please make sure to like, follow, or subscribe so that you can keep up with what's happening in and around our community of faith. Over the last few weeks, we've been exploring Psalms through the pandemic. As we come to worship today, let's begin with a reading from Psalms 130. Out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all of their sins. As we sing today, we cry out to the Lord, and like a good shepherd, he hears us and is attentive to our needs. He's full of mercy and grace and forgiveness and unfailing love. And though our whole being waits on him, we can be sure that he will redeem and restore all of creation. He is worthy of our praise. Now let's join together in a time of worship. Me. 
cross and follow me. I heard my Savior say, I gave my life to ransom thee. Surrender your all today Wherever he leads I'll go Wherever he leads I'll go I'll follow ourselves to you now. We ask your spirit to lead us. We ask for an awareness to, to know when you're talking to us, to know when you're, you're giving us direction. And God, we ask for courage to take the steps. God, if the road ahead seems uncertain, we do feel as if we are in the valley of the shadow of death. God, let us trust that, God, you're with us. Your 
spirit is guiding us. And God, that no matter where we are, if we're in green pastures, if we're by still waters, or we are in these valleys where we feel like we have no hope, God, you love us so. We are your beloved children, and God, we celebrate it. We trust in it. Thank you for your provision. I sense your presence now in this place.
Well, good morning, Vineyard Church. May I just tell you, it's good to see you this morning and you look marvelous. Welcome to our online gathering. Uh, for those of you who are kind of just tuning in, we've set a target date for July the 12th for in-person meetings. And um, that's still going to largely depend on what happens with the virus. And as we've seen this week, some states are experiencing more cases now than ever. So. I'm sure the uh, medical community will figure that out. We'll have some good information in a couple of weeks to make a, a wise decision about getting back together again. So this morning, I want to welcome all of those who are watching us from you know, Asia, Europe, Africa, Kennebra. <laughs> I don't know where people are watching from, but I know we have some guests who are tuned in you know, on the online thing. But before we get started into our message today, I really want to talk to, to my Vineyard family for a little bit. I have some, some news for you today. and I'm, uh, well, my wife is pregnant. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. I mean, you know, that, oh, well, you got to find something to laugh about, don't you? She, oh, by the way, she's not pregnant. Don't flood her with messages or phone calls right now. She'll probably kill me for even saying that. Um, no, you know that in the last six weeks, um, our lives and my particular family, uh, especially, have just been, well, they've just been crazy. You know, my son Brian has been diagnosed with ALS, and that has been a tremendous shock for our family. And, and we're, we're only six weeks into trying to figure that out and, and see what it's going to look like for him to navigate life with ALS. And then a couple weeks ago, I had shared with you that I was also diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I've been waiting uh, for tests to come back, and this week I did have a meeting with my oncologist. Uh, all the tests were, results were in, and, and the news that uh, we received this week was not quite as uh, good as uh, I was hopeful for. So I wanted to share a little bit with you about uh, where we are and how you can pray and that sort of thing and what we're going to do to face this and fight it. So the results came back and it looks like uh, I've been diagnosed with stage four mantle cell lymphoma. Um, I so far have refused to Google it. I'd rather hear from my doctors than, than all the other stuff out there. What it means is that um, according to my doctors, is that it's stage four because it has involved something other than my lymph nodes. Uh, several of my lymphatic, much of my lymphatic system is affected by this. There's activity in uh, many, many, many of my lymph nodes throughout my body. Uh, the most distressing thing is that it's now in my bone marrow. So I've probably had this for a while and just, and just didn't know it. And what that means is uh, at this point, there's no, no organs involved, which for that I'm very grateful. But it means that I'll have to undergo quite a radical uh, chemotherapy. Um, when I say radical, I mean they, they basically have to kill all of your bone marrow so that you can have a bone marrow transplant. So it's a little bit complicated because I have also a very rare gene in my body that but you know, I'm not surprised. I'm a very rare individual. And um, 
I've always known that, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, you, you nutcase, that's what you are. Uh, so anyway, it complicates things. So my, my doctor at East Jefferson has referred me to MD Anderson, and we are now in that phase of waiting for the hospital and the insurance company to come to some kind of terms so I can get an appointment and get started. Um, should that not work out, my, my um, second option would be here in New Orleans at Tulane University Medical Center, and they've already agreed to take me. So we're going to shoot for the MD Anderson thing just based on their years of experience with this particular rare thing that I have. Um, and I'll probably know that within a week or so, and, um, which has been a little bit stressful because I'm sort of like, gosh, can't we just get this going? And um, it's still going to take another week before I know who's going to be actually doing my treatment. So we're on hold for that. Now, one of the complicating things about this is that whether I go away for treatment or I stay here is that um, the doctor has said there will be a, there will come a point in time where I just won't be able to work. I'm going to have to give all of my attention and strength to this, especially when you're looking at um, your immune system being so compromised because they're destroying all your bone marrow. Um, so I know there will be some time that I just won't be able to be around. My original plan, obviously, was get some chemo, feel bad for a few days, and you know, be here on the weekends as much as I could. Um, right now, that's, that's going to change. So for now, I'll be here as long as I can, um, and I will keep you posted as to what that looks like. But what we're going to do after that is what I want to speak to you about next. The reality is, uh, Vineyard family, we have a strong church. We have strong staff. We have strong people. And we are well positioned to actually go through some things like this. Uh, we're well positioned to be without me. I mean, for a while, it's just not that big of a deal. Well, okay, that's a bit of an oversimplification. It's a big deal to me. Um, and I think it's probably a big deal to you too. However, whenever the time comes that I'm not able to be here on a weekly basis, then we're just going to take advantage of what God's already built here. Sean Rich is um, our executive pastor here. He's been running the staff for, for quite some time now. He oversees the staff uh, on my behalf, and he's going to continue to do that. He will be in the lead role for a while, just kind of guiding the church through, through this thing. He won't be alone in this and that our board of directors has stepped up. We've been meeting regularly in the last two weeks. And they are going to take a much more active role um, in this time where, where I will be sidelined. They're going to come alongside Sean and the rest of the staff, and they're going to be there for advice, for pastoral care, uh, for guidance. And for that, I am extremely grateful. We have good men on the board. We have good men and women on the staff, and we will be just fine. Our approach to ministry on the weekends, as far as our gatherings, it will be a, we'll, we'll have a team teaching thing. We've done that before, we'll do that again. Andrew will be heading up our team, and there will be several voices from our church and from our staff that'll be heard each week. We'll also bring in a few people. I, I know that my son Brian wants to come, and he wants to help. Uh, he wants to, to speak to you a few times, and I think that will be great. I have some friends in Houston, very dear friends, Bert and Evelyn Wagner. I think Bert will come in and speak, but mostly it will be our team. And we've decided that where I was going to be this, this summer was going to be the Book of Acts. And so what we're going to do is in July, we're going to actually start the Book of Acts. And our teaching team will take us from chapter one all the way through chapter 28. I think it's going to be a fantastic study. I was excited about doing it before the pandemic hit. Um, and so now we'll continue in the pandemic Psalms until um, in July, and we'll start the book of Acts in July. So I would encourage you, pray for our team. Uh, listen, give them your full support. Um, stand behind them as strongly as you've ever stood behind me and the whole church. I mean, this is a time for us to really step into what God's prepared us for. And he's made us a very strong church, for which I am so, so grateful. Uh, we'll find ways to keep everybody posted. I, I don't think I'm going anywhere for a few weeks, but we'll keep you posted as to what's going on um, in and around us. You know, my son Brian said, um, 
when he was first diagnosed, I, I will never, ever forget this, but he looked at me and he said, well, we usually say why, but he said, why not me? That's huge because none of us are exempt from any of this stuff. I have had similar thoughts, albeit right now so bizarre that both of us would be going through something this difficult at the same time. But I will say something else that he said, and it echoes from my heart. I am actually, I'm well positioned to go through a tough time, a tough thing like this, only because I have a good shepherd. I am well positioned. I'm ready to face it, to fight it. I do believe we're going to beat it. The thing that bothers me, and I, th I know this is a thing that bothers Brian, is it's, it's nice for us to be able to say, we're, we're up for this, we're, gonna, we're going after it. It crushes us that our families have to go through it. It is absolutely devastating to see his children struggle, to see my wife with a mother's heart that's already broken um, have to face this, and yet, I do believe they are well positioned to go through it as well. Never forget that the grace of God is with you when you need it. The empowering presence of God has seen us through this so far and will continue. So just pray for our family. It would be greatly appreciated. We'll keep you posted as best we can. And um, we're going we're gonna to make it. We're going to make it through this just fine. Well, this morning, I want to turn back to Psalm 23. In fact, I'll finish Psalm 23 today. Let's take a look at it. Psalm 23. I'm going to lead us through in a little different way today. So you recall the first couple of verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul and sends me in the right direction, puts, puts me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. As we've looked over this last few weeks, we realize David, who writes this, was once a shepherd himself, but he's writing this as a sheep, a sheep who belongs to the good shepherd, to God himself. This first piece is describing one season of the year where the sheep are down in the lush meadows the quiet streams. And it talks about the incredible care and protection of the good shepherd while they're in that lush meadow down at the, in the valley, so to speak. And what, what he does there is he protects from their enemies. Um, remember, remember the whole thing about they, they were fearful to lay down uh, and, and they were, and they were uh, irritated by pests and f flies in their nose and everything. And the good shepherd would put the oil everywhere. To me, that's the Holy Spirit. He would just douse their head in oil so they could lie down and rest. So listen, here's the thing. They're in the meadow. The shepherd is with them. Verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And when we talked last week how... Um, they would go from in the in the winter time. They would start to go to the top of the mountain. They would leave the lush meadows. Very hot down there. They've eaten most of the pasture. So now they're going up to the mountaintop. And to get there, you got to go through these crevasses, crevasses, and, and it's almost like a canyon, a very steep mountain. But it would have little gaps that you could navigate your way to the top. And and it's called the Valley of the Shadow of Death because the sunlight hardly ever hits it. It's always in the shadows. And it's the shadow of death because there were predators everywhere. But what does he say? No fear. I have no fear. Why? Because your rod and your staff, we talked about that last week, they comfort me. The good shepherd is with them. And then they reach the tabletop. They get to the top of the mountain. And he says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And to me, that was so revolutionary because I didn't realize table is not literally a feasting table. It is the mountaintop, it's the mesa, it's the plateau at the top, and, and the shepherd has prepared that area, the pasture. 
and everything for the sheep to be able to, to, to feed there during the winter months. And what's there? More enemies. In the presence of my enemies. So here we, we decided last week, all of life is the same. We go through different seasons, but there are always challenges. There are always problems. We're not exempt. We even saw how when a, a sudden snowstorm in, in the summertime might hit that mountain, the sheep get chilled. And, and what did the good shepherd do? He poured them a glass of brandy. Amazing. But he was ready for everything. It didn't matter what the problem was. He could, if a sheep was in threat of dying from the chill and the cold, he would give him some brandy and water, and soon he's invigorated. He's, his body warms up, and he's back, where? Back in the right direction. You've anointed my head with oil. My life overflows for one reason, and it's not because life is always Perfect. And remember, I told you a few weeks ago, never confuse life with God. We meet life on its terms because of the fallen world we live in. But we don't have to meet life on its terms without God. He says, my cup overflows. It does, whether there are enemies coming at me, even if they got me by the neck, I have a good shepherd who's never going to leave. And now listen to this, the last verse. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, we use this at funerals a lot. And oftentimes we think this psalm is just about when you're dying, but it's not. When does goodness and mercy follow me? All the days of my life. All the days, back to verse one, that I'm in the lush meadows. All the days that I'm, back to verse 4, I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. I may not be dying, but there's enemy, there's trouble, there's, there, there's, Ill, there's all kinds of stuff all around me. When is he with me? When, when does goodness and mercy follow me? When I'm on the tabletop, when I'm on the mountaintop of my experience with God. There are still dangers there, but I still have a good shepherd. I love this. Here's, here's the first thing I love the most. Surely, that word surely. Let me just ask you something. How many things are you really sure of in this life? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, really. What can we be certain of? Well, you take some time to think about that. I'm just going to give you the answer that we get here. We can be certain that goodness and mercy, that God himself, is with us all the days of our life. And if that's the only thing we can be absolutely, totally certain of, I'm gonna say something that you're not gonna understand unless you've been there. That's really enough to be certain of. But I don't know that we ever will really understand it until that's all we have. I think we live such prosperous lives in our first world country. The presence of God doesn't always say, okay, yeah, I know he's there, but it doesn't always seem like it's, you know, there are other things I would like following me. Yeah, I get it. But at some point, those things don't comfort, they don't satisfy, and they can't meet the need that only the good shepherd can. So if you want to put your surely in something, put it in this. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, surely they are with me, following me. Goodness means just that in the Hebrew language. It's just simply goodness and beauty. That's who God is. Mercy, it really means loving kindness or faithful love. That's what follows me all the days of my life. Hey, here's something interesting. So you're on the tabletop. You know, you've, been, you've come from the meadows through the valley of shadow death. You're on the tabletop. Well, winter is over. And, and now it's time to, or excuse me, I, I got that backwards. Summer is over. In the summer is when they go to the top of the mountain. 
But summer is over. It's going to get cold and unbearable at the heights. So now where do the sheep go? Well, they go back down to the bottom, to the, to the valley. Led by a good shepherd, followed by, go ahead, say it, goodness and mercy. Two sheepdogs who won't let them get lost. The shepherd's going down the mountain, back down through the valley of the shadow of death. The sheep are following, but you know how sheep are. You ever sit in the back row? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've done a lot of things from the back, haven't you? You ever wander off from the back when nobody was like, guess what? There are, there are sheepdogs in shepherding, and, and, and they, they keep the sheep moving toward the shepherd. They just surround them and and I, when, I, when I see this, goodness and mercy, guess it's the sheepdogs of God. Sheepdogs? Yeah, I know, that sounds kind of strange, but you, can you get that picture? And does that not say to us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are going before us, they're going behind us, they're around us, they're within us? Oh, my gosh. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Hey, listen to this from Psalm 42. Just turn a couple pages over or scroll down your electronic Bible. Psalm 42, verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in despair? Do you remember when we talked about the sheep that would lie down, but then they'd flip themselves over because they were too heavy with wool or they were just overweight and suddenly all fours are standing up and they will die and they can't get themselves up. Isn't that something that David, the shepherd who is now riding as a sheep, is saying to his soul, why are you cast down? Hope in God. Okay, so I'm turned upside down right now. Things are really difficult. Hope in God for the help of his presence. Goodness and mercy. Verse seven, deep calls to deep. The sound of your waterfalls. I can hear the, the turmoil of the, the, brave, uh, the waves, the breakers, but you are also overwhelming me. And this is, this is one that somebody gave me this week. I love this. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and his song will be with me in the night. Goodness and mercy, so important. Hey, do you remember in Psalm 139 where David said, where can I go from your spirit? Man, if I go to the heights of heaven, you're there. If I bury myself in the ground, in the grave, you are there. I cannot escape your presence. I was telling my son this morning, you know, when I was kind of coming up in church, I remember that Psalm and I don't know if people preached it this way, but this is the way I heard it. God knows everything and he's everywhere that you are, so you better watch it because Big Brother is watching you. And isn't it a shame, but that's how I took it. And I think it was, a, 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 a well, I guess I could call it a tactic or a strategy to keep me in line. I may have even used it on my children. God, I hope not. But, you know, you know, God's watching. You know, watch. You know, oh, what a terrible thing. I used to worry, you know, have you ever worried? About, you know, you ever look over your shoulder just to see if there's any bad guys following you? You know, because most of us, some bad guys probably have followed us or some bad things. Listen, you, got, you, you didn't want to look over your shoulder. But the truth is now I want to look over my shoulder. And here's what I want to see. I don't care who else is following me. I want to see God's goodness and mercy. And he's always there. Surely. Say it. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Follow? That means pursue. Wow. Do you mean God wants to be with me and you whether we're in the valley, the meadow, the mountaintop, in all of it, life's danger, God wants to be with us so much that he will chase after us. Yes, yes, and yes. To do what? To restore our soul, make us lie down, 
to give us comfort, to take care of us through all of life's difficulties. And one day it's inevitable. It's inevitable. We will leave this part of life and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't dwell on that a whole lot. I'm pretty sure of that. I don't think I'm going anytime soon. So I'm just going to keep looking over my shoulder for goodness and mercy. And in the most difficult of days, I believe I'll see it. I believe you'll see it as well in whatever you're going through. Well, I'm trying to think if I have anything else. <laughs> oh, I think not. I think that's it. I just really wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you today. And that's from my heart to yours. Why don't we do this as we close today? I think as we close out Psalm 23... We should all become even more familiar with it, so we will, we will read it together. You know what I think would be a good idea? I think it'd be great if maybe over the next few weeks we actually put it to memory. I've got most of it memorized now, but wouldn't that be good to have that brought to your mind when you need it the most? So let's read it together. The words will be on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I do have one final word for you. I hate to trick you like that. So I'll leave you with this thought. If I'm looking over my shoulder in goodness and mercy, if the goodness and mercy of God are pursuing me, and overtakes me, and my cup overflows, your cup overflows, do you realize that you're also leaving something behind you? Goodness and mercy, a legacy of a life well lived. God's goodness and mercy overtakes you. Your cup overflows. It flows out to other people. And when you look back at your life, you'll realize there's a trail that you have left of God's goodness and mercy. May God bless you today. May you be filled with a rich awareness of the presence of the Father's love poured out on you by the Holy Spirit. May you be filled today with the very awareness that the Good Shepherd, Jesus the Son, is praying for you. Wow. May you be drawn up into the divine dance of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit today. May your cup overflow onto others. And when you turn around, may you see goodness and mercy in everything. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you later. If you'd like to give as an act of worship, you can give online at vcno.org give.
or by texting any dollar amount to 84321. If you're new to the Vanguard and maybe you've just gotten more plugged in over the last few weeks online, then make sure to fill out a Connect card at bcno.org connect. Our church auditorium will be open on Mondays and Wednesdays between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. for a time of prayer and reflection. For those working during the day, the auditorium will be open Monday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. Feel free to stop by for self-guided communion, Bible readings, and reflection. Our pastors will be available at all these times and would love to listen and to pray with you. If you have a 6th through 12th grader, our Student Life Youth Ministry will begin meeting in person again this week. They'll have socially distant gatherings on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. For more information about this, check out any of the Student Life social media pages. And one final thing, if you have kids younger than 5th grade, like I do, make sure to stick around for our Kingdom Kids service at 1115. Have a great Sunday.